to Helen. I saw thee once, once only, years ago. I must not say how many, but not many. It was a July midnight, and from out a full orb moon, that like thine own soul soaring, sought a precipitate pathway up through heaven. There fell a silvery silken veil of light, with quietude and sultriness and slumber, upon the upturned faces of a thousand roses that grew in an enchanted garden, where no wind dared to stir unless on tiptoe, fell on the upturned faces of these roses that gave out in return for thy love light their odorous souls in an ecstatic death fell on the upturned faces of these roses that smiled and died in this parterre enchanted by thee and by the poetry of thy presence clad all in white upon a velvet bank I saw thee half reclining, while the moon fell on the upturned faces of the roses, and on thine own upturned, alas, in sorrow. Was it not fate that on this July midnight, was it not fate, whose name is also sorrow, that bade me pause before the garden gate to breathe the incense of those slumbering roses? No footsteps stirred, the hated world all slept, save only thee and me. Oh heaven, oh God, how oh, my heart beats in coupling those two words. Save only thee and me. I paused, I looked, and in an instant all things disappeared. Ah, Bear in mind, this garden was enchanted. The pearly luster, luster of the moon went out. The mossy banks and the meandering paths, the happy flowers and the repining trees, were seen no more. The very roses' odors died in the arms of the adoring heirs. All, all expired save thee save less than thou, save only the divine light in thine eyes, save but the soul in thine uplifted eyes. I saw but them, they were the world to me. I saw but them, saw only them for hours, saw only them until the moon went down. What wild heart histories seemed to lie in written upon those crystalline, celestial spheres how dark a woe yet how sublime a hope how silently serene a sea of pride how daring an ambition yet how deep how fathomless a capacity for love but now at length dear diane sank from sight into a western couch of thundercloud and thou a ghost amid the entombing trees didst glide away. Only thine eyes remained. They would not go. They never yet have gone, lighting my lonely pathway home that night. They have not left me as my hopes have since. They follow me. They lead me through the years. They are my ministers, yet I their slave. Their office is to illumine and enkindle. My duty to be saved by their bright light and purified in their electric fire and sanctified in their Elysian fire. They fill my soul with beauty, which is hope, and are far up in heaven. The stars I kneel to in the sad, silent watches of my night. While even in the meridian glare of day, I see them still. Two sweetly scintillate Venuses, unextinguished by the sun. <laughs>